Welcome viewers, wherever you are watching us from, we are so blessed to share the gospel. Oh my goodness. You know the gospel, the gospel is what gives us life. The gospel is what gives us hope. The gospel gives us strength. The gospel makes life becomes a reality. It is something we can, we can talk about, we can speak with boldness about, because we have experienced it through the gospel. And this time I'm just blessed just to come and share with you this word of life. I want to speak about inheritance or our inheritance. Which inheritance have we received? And I know I'm talking to many people who are my followers or who are my audience. They are lovers of the Bible. And I'm going to be speaking from the Bible. And uh, when we talk about inheritance in the Bible, we know the biggest story we get about inheritance comes from the book of Genesis, from the father of faith, Abraham. is the first person we are seeing God promising him of an inheritance or a land which he shall inherit with his descendants. Let us just go and see this one in the book of Genesis chapter 15. I want to read from verse 7. And the Bible says this, in Genesis 15 and verse 7, he says, And he said unto him, I am the Lord that brought thee out of Hur of the Chaldeans to give thee this land to inherit. You see, God picks Abraham from the land of Ur and he brings him to this particular land and he shows it to him and he tells him, I have brought you here to give you this land as an inheritance. You see, God was speaking about a land as an inheritance. And he spoke it to Abraham, the promise of giving him and his descendants a land as an inheritance. We don't know today, in our day, does still God gives us lands as our inheritance or what does he give us or what has he given to us as our inheritance? In the case of Abraham, we are seeing there was a promise made to him and the promise also included a land to inherit him and his descendants. Again, we see it in Genesis chapter 28 and verses 13. Let's just go there. Genesis 28, 28 and verses 13, where again God speaks to Abra, I mean to Jacob. This time he speaks it to the grandchild of Abraham, who is Jacob. And he tells him this, and behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham thy father, and the God of Isaac, the land whereon where thou lies, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed. So Jacob is running away from Esau after getting the blessing from his father. And uh, it is a surprise when people speak of blessings and they mention blessings as, as material things. You see, when Jacob was running away from Esau, Jacob never received a land from Esau. Esau never mentioned properties to Jacob. I mean, uh, Isaac never mentioned properties to, to Jacob. But now Jacob is running away because Esau wants to kill him. He leaves the land behind him. Which means blessings were not in terms of, of land and houses and all that. It was just in terms of words. The words which Isaac spoke over Jacob. So Jacob takes off. And he's running away, going to his uncle Laban. He falls asleep on the way. And God appears to him in a dream. And he tells him, you see, in this land, I will give it to you to inherit it. I will give it to you and to thy seed. So again, God gives a promise here, a promise of land as an inheritance to Jacob. We have seen it to Abraham. He spoke the promise of that land as an, an inheritance to his descendants. And remember very well, when God is speaking to Abraham, Abraham has no child yet. But God calls him a father of many nations and he promises to give him an inheritance. Okay, 
Now again he appears to Jacob. Jacob is also childless at this time. He is running away from his brother Esau. And God tells him, I will give you this land and to thy seed. So inheritance was promised to them in terms of a physical, geographical place or a land somewhere, which God gave it to them as a promise. A promise for them to come and inherit it with their seed or with their descendants. You see, an inheritance, it is something for posterity. It is something which is never to be given away. When somebody receives an inheritance, or the way we understand it in the Bible, when God allocated different tribes in specific places or lands, that land was never to be sold. That land was never to be given away. An inheritance is something which the, that family holds for posterity. It is something they will share with their children and their children's children, and it is always called in their name. It is something for posterity. It is something which they, they are given for them and their descendants to come, something which you live with for quite a long time, maybe your whole lifespan, and after you are gone, your children will come also and stay there because it is something which you have inherited. It is an inheritance. Hallelujah. So it is something which they were given for posterity. So we see God here giving a promise of, of inheritance. And this promise was the inheritance of a land. Amen. Again, when we see that word inheritance mentioned in the Old Testament, we see God mentioning the Jews or the nation of Israel. He calls them his inheritance. God calls the Jews his inheritance. Let's see it in Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 20. And it says this, But the Lord had taken you and brought you forth out of the iron furnace, out of Egypt, to be unto him a people of inheritance as he are this day. God says he brought the Jews out of the iron furnace, even out of Egypt. And the reason was that these people be a people of inheritance. God chose Israel as his people for posterity, as his inheritance, or a people whom he will never give away. Praise the Lord. What a joy to know that you are, you are God's inheritance. That God will never give you away. You are his and his to stay. What a joy is that. Again, we see it in chapter, in chapter 32 and verse 9 of the same, same book. Chapter 32 and verses 9. Again, God speaks about the same of, of Israel as his inheritance. And he says this, For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the Lord of his inheritance. He says Jacob is the Lord of his inheritance. When he, speak of, when he speaks of Jacob, he speaks of the nation of Israel. He says the nation of Israel is his Lord of his inheritance. We see it again repeated in Psalms 28. Psalms 28. And we are reading... In verses 9, again, God speaks here of Israel as his inheritance. And the writer says, Save thy people and bless thy inheritance. Fill them also and lift them up forever. God speaks of Israel as his inheritance. We are that. Which means God was never going to give away Israel. They were his chosen possession. They were his people. Hallelujah. They were his chosen and they were his people. We see it again in Psalms 94 and verses 14. Psalms 94 and verses 14. Let me just read for you. In Psalms 94 and verses 14, the Lord speaks again here. For the Lord will not cast off his people, 
neither will he forsake his inheritance. Which means this nation of Israel, they were chosen as a people who belong to God. God declares Israel as his inheritance, which means he will not cut himself out of his inheritance. Neither will he ever forsake them. What a joy to know that you are God's inheritance. He will never forsake you. Neither will he cast you off or cut you off. Because you are his possession. You are his inheritance. Praise the Lord. Psalm 7, 8 and verse 62. It says this. Mm, hallelujah. I like this. It says this. He gave his people over also unto the sword and was wroth with his inheritance. You see, the psalmist tells us that God gave them over unto the sword. You see? And was angry with his inheritance. Yes, they were his inheritance, but at times, a time came because of their constant disobedience. And the consequences of their disobedience had to follow. Why? Because under the law, there were always wages of sin, which were to follow the disobedient. When God tells you this is the way to follow, and you choose to go the opposite, God has been here for quite a long time. He understands the consequences of somebody being disobedient. Even if God does, doesn't punish you, but there are consequences for disobedience. You see, sin has its wages, and the wages of sin will definitely follow, follow after you. Psalms 23, 33 and verse 12. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, and the people whom he has chosen for his own inheritance. Do you hear that? The people whom God has chosen to be his own inheritance. Those people, the, the psalmist calls them blessed. If God has chosen it to be his, his inheritance, my friend, it means you are blessed. And let's look at one more scripture about Israel being God's inheritance in Isaiah chapter 19. And we are reading in verses, Isaiah 19, we are reading in verses uh, 25, verse 25. And it says this. Whom the Lord of hosts shall bless, saying, Blessed be Egypt, my people. He calls Egyptians his people, and Assyrian the work of my hands, and Israel my inheritance. God classifies them in a position that is unique from all other nations. He says Assyrians are the work of his hands. He says Egypt are his people, but he says the Jews or Israel are what? Are God's inheritance. That's what we are seeing in the Old Testament, God revealing Israel that Israel is his inheritance. So, inheritance, as we've seen it uh, in the beginning, it was promised to Abraham. Abraham, the father of, of many, was promised a land to inherit. And then God also speaks of Israel as being his inheritance. Now, we see Israel now coming back from captivity in Egypt, and now they are coming back with the inheritance which God has spoken to Abraham. We see this one he also in Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 21. Let's go there. In the book of Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verses 21, where Israel now comes back to possess that which God had promised to them as an inheritance. Furthermore, the Lord was angry with me for your sakes and swore that I should not go over Jordan and that I should not go in and that I should not go in unto that good land which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance. Now we are seeing now inheritance again being spoken as land which the Jews now are coming to possess. And Moses says that the Jews made him angry to the extent that he missed going into 
the land which God had promised them because of how angry he was. Hallelujah. You know the story, how it happened. When Moses was wroth, or Moses was angry, by the disobedience of the Jews, and God tells Moses, go and speak to the rock. But this time, he doesn't go to speak to the rock. He goes and he hits the rock. You know, the rock represents who? The rock is Christ Jesus. The rock in the Old Testament was a figure of Christ, who is the cornerstone, who is the rock of ages. And in the first instance, God told Moses to strike the rock. When he striked the rock, and there was no water in the camp, the rock gave out water, and the Jews were satisfied with the water from the rock. Then the next time he was told, now go and speak to the rock. But because he was so angry, he could not control his anger, he went and he hit the rock. Christ was only to be crucified only once. But the next time you want anything from Christ, you just speak to him, not again crucifying him. And because of that, Moses was told, you will never enter the promised land. Praise the Lord. I thank God that Moses never entered the land of promise. Do you know why? Because Moses represents the law. If Moses had crossed the river Jordan to enter into the land of promise, then it meant that even today we could be accessing the blessings or the promises of God through the law. Amen. And therefore, thanks be to God that Moses never crossed. But God raised somebody called Joshua. The name Joshua comes from the word Yeshua, where we get the word Jesus. God raised Joshua to cross that river Jordan and bring them to the land of promise. God raised Christ that only through Jesus can we access the promises of God and not through the law. The law can never help us to access God's promises because the law depends on your effort. But the grace of God speaks about the effort of Christ, the work of Christ. The law is not of faith. Hallelujah. The law kills faith. It is not of faith. So anybody who thinks that by keeping the law and the commandments, they are pleasing God. Let me tell you, you cannot, because the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith. The way Paul tells us in Galatians 3, in verse 10 and verse 12, go and check it out. It is not of faith. Hallelujah. Again, we read in Joshua chapter 1 and verses 6. Joshua chapter 1. In verse 6, we see now Joshua bringing the Jews to cross over the river Jordan and enter into the land which God had promised them as an inheritance. He says, Be strong and of a good courage, for unto these people shall thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swore unto their fathers to give them. He says, this land, shall you give it to these people as an inheritance? So, an inheritance under that old covenant or under the Jews, an inheritance was in terms of land. Amen. I want us to see what our inheritance today is as the church of Christ. Do we still have to ask God for land or a geographical place as our inheritance. Where is our inheritance as the children of God today? In the Old Testament, they were promised a place as their inheritance. Where is our inheritance today as the children of God? Are we also to go after land as our inheritance in this testament? In Joshua 11 and verse 23, Let's read there, Joshua chapter 11 and verses 23. It says this, So Joshua took the whole land, according to all that the Lord said unto Moses, and Joshua gave it for an inheritance unto Israel, according to their divisions by their tribes, and the land rested from war. Joshua gave it to them as an inheritance 
And the land did what? The land rested from war. And we see it again in Joshua chapter 14 and verses 13. Let's read here. And Joshua blessed him and gave unto Caleb, the, the son of Jephna, Hebron, for an inheritance. Hebron therefore became the inheritance of Caleb, the son of Jephna, the, Ke the Kenazite, unto this day, because that he wholly, he wholly followed the Lord God of Israel. We are seeing Caleb also receiving his inheritance as, as the land. He is being given the land as what? As an inheritance. Praise the Lord. So, the promise they were given was the promise of land. Amen. They were given a promise of a geographical location. They were given a promise of a land to inherit where they could find shelter, they could find their identity, they could find their provision, they could find a sense of belonging, they could find security, they could find ownership. That is what land gives to you. When you are given an inheritance in terms of land, it gives you a place to put on shelter, a place to, to have your own identity, a place where you can have your provision. You can go farm and get a, a reward or a harvest out of your labor, out of the, the work of your hand. You can harvest from the land. You get provision. You get a sense of belonging because this, that home or that land gives you a sense of belonging. It belongs to you. It is your inheritance. It is something which you feel proud of. You feel you belong. And also, it gives you security and ownership. That is what they were promised under the Old Testament. And that is what that promise, we are seeing it being fulfilled by now Joshua, who is a picture of Jesus Christ, now bringing them to the land of promise, a place where they could find refuge, a place where they could find security. Now, today, as the church of Christ, or in the New Testament, where do we find our inheritance? Do we find our inheritance in, in land or in what? What is, is our inheritance today in the New Testament? What, where are we getting our inheritance from? Has God again promised to us a geographical location or a geographical place where we shall get our inheritance? Let's go to Galatians chapter 3 and verses 16 and see what God speaks to us here. Galatians chapter 3 and verses 16. Hallelujah. Verses 16 and verses 18. And Paul writes here and he says, Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He, he saith, not and to seeds as of many, but as of one unto thy seed, which is Christ. So he says to Abraham and his seed, did God make the promise? He gave the promise to the seed of Abraham. Hallelujah. Then he says in verses 18, for if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more of promise. But God gave it to Abraham by promise. Do you hear that? When God gave this promise of a seed or of an inheritance which will come through the seed of Abraham, he never gave this promise under the law. Do you hear that? Because Abraham was not relating to God under the covenant of the law which came through Moses. So God gave a promise of an inheritance before the law. So even if Moses came and introduced them to that land of promise, and Joshua took them to the promised land, that was not the fulfillment of the promise which God had kept, or which God had spoken through Abraham. It was something more than an agricultural land. It was something more than a place to build houses and to plant and to harvest 
and to find a sense of identity in a geographical location. It is more than that. We see in Ephesians chapter 1 and verses 10 and 11. Let's go up there and see what Paul tells us. In Ephesians chapter 1 verses 10 and 11. Paul tells us this. That in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth. Which are on earth, even in him. Verse 11. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. Hallelujah. So Paul here tells us how God raises Jesus that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things and gather them in Christ. He may gather all things in who? In Christ. Both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. He gathers everything in heavens, things on earth, they are all encompassed in Christ. Amen. Then he says, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. So he says, in this man Christ Jesus, whom all things in heaven, and all things on earth have been gathered together in him. He says in him we have obtained an inheritance. But he says in Christ we have obtained an inheritance. Now, we want to see what is this inheritance that we have obtained in Christ Jesus. That should be our guess now. What is this inheritance that God today has given to us as his children in Christ Jesus. Amen. So friends, God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. I just want to request you just to support us. Support us to keep this gospel going on air. Through those numbers, through M-Pesa or through that bank account, please send in your contributions, send in your offerings, and let us keep this gospel going forward. God bless you. We'll see you again. Amen.